Hi everyone, welcome to Art with Mrs. Tebow. Today, our lesson is gonna be focused on the story, It Looked Like Spilt Milk by Charles G. Shaw. After we read the story, we're going to do an art lesson together. The story is called, It Looked Like Spilt Milk by Charles G. Shaw. And I'm reading it with permission from Scholastic Publishing. It Looked Like Spilled Milk by Charles G. Shaw. It Looked Like Spilt Milk by Charles G. Shaw. Sometimes it looked like spilt milk, but it wasn't spilt milk. Sometimes it looked like a rabbit, but it wasn't a rabbit. Sometimes it looked like a bird, but it wasn't a bird. Sometimes it looked like a tree, but it wasn't a tree. Sometimes it looked like an ice cream cone, but it wasn't an ice cream cone. Sometimes it looked like a flower, but it wasn't a flower. Sometimes it looked like a pig, but it wasn't a pig. Sometimes it looked like a birthday cake, but it wasn't a birthday cake. Sometimes it looked like a sheep, but it wasn't a sheep. Sometimes it looked like a great horned owl, but it wasn't a great horned owl. Sometimes it looked like a mitten, but it wasn't a mitten. Sometimes it looked like a squirrel, but it wasn't a squirrel. Sometimes it looked like an angel, but it wasn't an angel. Sometimes it looked like spilt milk, but it wasn't spilt milk. It was just a cloud in the sky. The end. I like this story because it reminds me to stop and look around once in a while. I remember as a kid, I would gaze up at the clouds all the time and my imagination was quite vivid so I'd see all sorts of things. I'm fortunate because even as an adult, my imagination still sees things in the clouds. Let's pause for a moment and take a look or even go outside and look at clouds in your beautiful yard. What do you see in those clouds? For our project today, you're going to need two pieces of paper, scissors, pencil, any material you would like to color your project with. Go gather your materials and we'll meet back together. All right, artists, now that you have your materials, we can get started. I want you to take your first paper and fold it in half. It doesn't matter which direction really, we just want to make the paper smaller. This is important because we're going to cut a shape out and it needs to be smaller than your other paper. I'm going to take my scissors and cut on this fold. Now again, it does not matter if it's perfect, we don't do perfect in art, but also we're going to be cutting a shape out of this anyways. I'm just going to set aside my other piece, I don't need it. And with this paper, I have a fun challenge. We just listened to a story about clouds and clouds happen to be organic shapes. An organic shape means it's curvy, it has no corners, it's very natural. I want you to draw an organic shape on your paper. Now already your brain is thinking of what you want it to be. We don't want that to happen, we wanna make this a challenge. So maybe you even go to a family member and ask them to draw a curvy organic shape for you or you could close your eyes. That's what I'm gonna do for mine. You can use a pencil, I'm using a marker so that you can see it clearly. I'm actually gonna close my eyes and I'm gonna try drawing a curvy organic shape. Now remember, no corners, no perfect straight lines, and I shouldn't be able to identify it quickly. I can't think in my head, I'm drawing a flower. I'm gonna draw curvy lines, here we go. Eyes are closed. Now, I have to end it as a shape, so I am gonna open my eyes now and take a look to connect it. 
Now again, I didn't really control it. I let it be what it wanted to be to create a random organic shape. Now we're gonna take our scissors and cut it out. Now again, cutting might be a new skill for you, or maybe it's something you're working on. Just try your best to keep the train on the tracks, and if you fall off, go back on the tracks and try again. Now that I have my shape cut out, this is the really fun part. All right, this is where that Im imagination comes in. You're gonna look at your shape from different angles. You're gonna turn it, you're gonna twist it, and you're gonna think, hmm, what could this be? Just like a cloud floating in the sky that makes us our imagination go wild. Ooh, it's a pirate ship or it's a dog. What could your shape be? Now you're gonna get to add things to this. So right now I'm seeing some things, but it's missing important parts. If that's happening to you, that's okay. Just stick with what your brain can see in it. Let's see, okay, I think I'm done. Once I know what I want it to be, I place it on my paper in the place that makes sense. If it's something that's gonna be in the sky, I would put it up here, on the ground here. In my situation, I actually wanna turn my paper and it's gonna go right in the middle. You do what's gonna work for you though. All right, now, here comes that really fun creative part. I'm going to take my pencil. I'm using a marker so you can see, but you use a pencil and you're going to trace your shape. I'm tracing it by holding my shape still and going around the whole shape. Then I take the shape off. All right, so now is that really exciting time. It is my job as an artist to be able to visually portray to my audience, to you, what my mind sees in my work. Right now you all see a random blob, an organic shape. Well, I'm gonna start adding details so that your mind can see what my mind sees. Watch this, and then you get to do your shape with your ideas. Not even using any words for clues, but using pictures. I'm adding details onto my drawing to try to help people realize what I'm turning my shape into. If you already know it, go ahead and start shouting them out. What do you think it is? All right, I should have enough details by now. Can you tell what my shape is? That's right, it's a bow tie. That's what my mind saw in the shape. Now it's your turn. Take a look at your shape. No cheating and cutting it. Use the shape you have and turn it into some beautiful imaginative art. I'm sure you're noticing I've added color to my work. Color is one of the best clues that you can give as an artist to tell your meaning and your message in your work. Take a look at your drawing. Is it meant to be underwater? Make sure that you have a watercolor. Is it meant to be in the sky? Is it daytime? Is it nighttime? These are the color details that will help your artwork come to life and help people understand your message. We're gonna pause the video right here so you can add color to your work as well. All right, by now, I bet you've added your color. I wanna say thank you for joining me for my art lesson. You just joined me for Art with Mrs. Tebow and we created a project inspired by the book it looked like Spilt Milk by Charles G. Shaw. I had a lot of fun making an organic shape with you and creating our own creative artwork out of it. Hope to see you next time.